good. How you doing? I'm okay. I'm okay. How did you come across my channel? Um, just trying to spread the gospel. Oh, you tried to spread it here in a Muslim stream. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't think that's the right place to try to spread it. You know. True. Okay, so uh, you're a Christian, yeah? Yes. What denomination of Christianity are you? Baptist. Let me just confirm a few things, even though you're supposed to believe them, but just I need to make sure because different Christians believe different things, okay? You believe in the Trinity? Yes. So you believe Jesus is God? Yes. Fine. Why? Divine, divine. I'm saying divine. I didn't say oh, yes. why. Yeah. You yes. believe that the Bible is the word of God? Yes. Inspired, inspired word of God, right? Yes. Do you believe the Bible is infallible? Doesn't have mistakes, errors. Scribal errors. And not the message itself. So does the message have contradiction? Uh, no. No. You sure about that? Yes, I know they scrapped in copying. They made errors in copying the, the manuscripts, but the message itself is the same. So you want to spread the gospel, right? That's what you say. Mm -hmm. And you believe the gospel is from, from God? Yes. So is it all right if I ask you questions about the gospels that you want to spread? Of course. You believe in the Trinity? Yes. Father, Son, why is the Trinity? Can you define it? I like to look at it like a family. Okay. A family is one, but there's a father, there's a mother, and there's, there might be a child in there but still one family. Like with God, there are three different persons, but they're one but, in essence. So is that your understanding of the Trinity? Yes. But isn't in a family, there's three distinct persons. There's three distinct people. There are three distinct entities. So do you mm -hmm. believe the Trinity is three distinct entities and persons and people? Yes, but they're, but they're, they're three they're distinct people, but uh, they're one in essence, meaning they they united. They don't. They they never reveal themselves as separate gods, but they're one God, three different people. Do you know what distinct means? Different, like no, not just different, is it? Separate, unique from one they're another. They're not separate. They're not. They're okay. not separate. But that's what the word means. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So if I say you are distinct from your brother, that means you're different individuals, separate individuals, unique. Each of you has his own definition, right? You're not okay. united. When you say to me they're distinct, but they're united, it is like saying you they are. But all powerful weak or the same they're a married bachelor you get what i'm trying to say you're in essence point. you're, you're telling me a contradiction point. so my quick, but yeah but i'm trying just to understand are you saying that there are three gods united together no, they're they're under they're one the one name one god but three different people what do you mean by people for example like a family there's a there's three there's different people family is three, it. it's not one it's three different people but it's a one family they're not uh Two families. In the family, in one family, the father is 33%, uh, the son is 33%, and the mother is 33%. Are you saying the father is 33% God, the son is 33% God, and the Holy Spirit is 33% God, and they make one God? They're, they're 100%. But that's the, in the family example doesn't work. It's, it's just a way to explain the mystery. We don't yeah. know all about it. It's just the way so God it's a mystery. In, so, the in, in a lot of ways, in a lot of yeah. ways, it's a mystery. But okay. it's the way God revealed Himself through the Christian Bible. I just wanted the definition of the. You give me an example, but I wanted the definition. Okay, let me give you a definition. You say if you agree or disagree. I'll, I'll help you with this. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, co-equal, co-eternal. The Father is not the Son. The Son is not the Holy Spirit. Three persons in one being. Correct. Yes. Okay, so that's the definition, the, the, the church's definition, the Constantinople Creed, the Nicene Creed, blah, 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 right? So when someone asks you, is the Trinity, that's what I'm looking for from you, basically. So mm -hmm. to explain it to me in these words, which don't make any sense anyways, but it's, it's an easier way just to deliver what you, what you mean, right? Okay, now where do you get this concept in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation? When, when Jesus resurrected on Matthew 28, he commanded the disciples to baptize people, new believers in the name of the Father. Son and Holy Spirit. Uh, he commanded them to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And how does that prove? First, they're co-equal. Second, they're co-eternal. Third, that they are three in one. Where is where is all of that in the verse? Because they're they're bringing the name of the Holy Spirit and the Son alongside the Father. If, no, if yeah. I mention three names in one sentence, does it doesn't mean that they're all equal, co-eternal, right? If I say buy, buy juice for Alex, Max, and O'Connor, doesn't mean that the three are one or that the three are equal. There's no necessity there, right? We use we used all the other verses, and if you if you look at all of them, you can you can see there's there's the. But this that's thing. what I'm looking for. Okay, so the first verse doesn't help. What well, else do you have? It, it, How does it help? I mean, together when you look at the different verses and you put them together, it gives one verse could better explain the other one. The same way Jesus talks about the Holy Spirit and then goes on and tells disciples to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, let me ask, let me, let me just, let me, okay. Let me ask you this. Look, 
I don't believe this verse is, is, I believe it's a fabrication. Some scholars, they said that as well, some Christian scholars, right? Why did they say that? They said very simply, bring me one disciple that baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go ahead. One verse. Not in the name of, listen, listen, I'm very, very carefully because some people, they don't get this. Not in the name of Jesus. In, in the name of the Father, okay. the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The three. Go ahead. Give me one verse. We we might not have a, a like a like an example of that. But, but they did baptize. They did baptize. They did baptize. They did so baptize. why did it? Why did they didn't listen to Jesus if Jesus actually said this? Are you saying all of the disciples dis, dis, disobeyed Jesus, even though we have written examples? That's why I'm telling you why those Christian scholars say this is this is not accurate. It's a fabrication. It was added later on, just like one one John five seven was added later on to try to justify the Trinity. Right? So they say this is the same thing. Why their justification is? If Jesus would said that, then we will see in the accounts in all the disciples after Jesus' ascension, they would be baptizing in the name of the Father and the Holy Spirit. Wouldn't you say that's rational? If Jesus said that, they would be doing okay. this. I get your point, yes. Okay, so what other verses do you have to justify the Trinity? Um, the, um, when in, in the epistles of Paul, he, he'll bring up uh, the Holy Spirit alongside the Father and the Son. And even in Acts, uh, when... There was an occasion where somebody lied about money and the Holy Spirit was brought up. You, They said you have lied to the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is, is all through the Bible. So we have to no, we have to find a so place. So far, you're not you're not giving me a verse. Right. I want I want you to bring me a verse as what, what they say, because well, give me an example. A verse you can can check a verse and say to me, look, here it says, for example, here, here it says the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are, are equal. Then I'll say, okay. Here it says that they're all co-eternal. I'll say, okay. You say, okay, look, this verse here says that they are all one. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. I'll say, okay. So then I'll understand that you're bringing this belief from the scripture. But what I see is that you already believe it, and then you're imposing it to the scripture. That's why I see what they call Jesus, so, Jesus, right? You know? well, these so, mm -hmm. so what would you say um, about the Holy Spirit then if it's in the Bible? How would you look at it? Well, it's different ways. Different Christians look at it differently. Some Christians will say to you, the Holy Spirit is God. Some right. some people will say to you, the Holy Spirit is a creation of God. One of the creations that God created. God created a spirit. No problem. So you can say that spirit is an angel, is something. But God created something and that spirit is obeying God. Where is the issue? If that spirit is a creation of God, obeying God. So, uh, for example, when it says if you blaspheme against the Holy Spirit, you blaspheme against God. Because if that is if that is the divine uh, creation of God, like angels, if you blaspheme against them, then by extension, you're blaspheming against God. In Islam, if you blaspheme, if you disbelieve in the angels, you disbelieve in Allah. Even though we don't say the angels are Allah, but they are one of the articles of faith that we believe in. So you can say that the Holy Spirit is a creation of God, is, a, is something that is like, let's say, an angel or divine creation of God that God created. What is the issue there? That can fit perfectly with the text, right? But you, st but you believe in the Trinity. The question is, where did you get it from if you're not finding it in the verses? It's, it's there. It's, it's not explicit in, in, in that would satisfy somebody's that's not uh, a Christian. It's not going to satisfy your. So how can you evangelize to me then? <laughs> you know, you, if you, if you, if what you're going to bring up is not going to satisfy the people who are not Christians, then how can you convince them of your faith? You know, because it's, it, the the Holy Spirit does that. The the work of believing and and growing in faith is 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 is, is, is it a gift? Not everybody okay, you has know, that. Do you know how long I've been talking to Christians? You know, I've been talking to Christians for a while, right? Let's just say for a while, small while. The time I've been talking to, to, the, to the Christians, try, they've been trying to evangelize. They've been praying for me, trying to heal things that I don't have problems, but they're trying to heal me, you know? Anyways, they've been trying to do all of these things. Why the Holy Spirit is not working? Because it's not about that. He, he doesn't, he's a God of order. He doesn't just pop up out of nowhere. But you said to me two seconds ago, it's through the Holy Spirit you get guided. It's yes. Not through you. Yeah, salvation. We believe that salvation is a gift to God, and it's the Holy Spirit that gives you faith. Okay. But He doesn't just throw it around everywhere. You you have to be uh, seeking God. You have. I read the Bible. What is more than that than seeking God by reading the Scripture of God? Say it again. I'm saying I read the Bible. What mm -hmm. is more than that is a sign of me seeking the truth. And when I'm reading the Bible, by the way, I was not reading it with a, a Islamic lens, trying to find mistakes in this. I, I was genuinely reading it, trying to see, okay, what this, where these people are coming from. Because when right. you are a Muslim, then obviously you're always curious about the differences between Islam and Christianity. And you want to see, okay, why do these people believe these things that we don't believe in? And then when I read the Bible, I saw it's actually supporting what we believe in instead of what the Christians believe in. So I was even more confused. Why do those people believe in the things that they believe in? And then I realized that all of this comes from the church. 
all of this comes from after the Romans they adopted Christianity, spread this religion in churches, and then people adopted this religion father, uh, son, and son, and son, and son until today. And it has nothing to do with what the Bible says. If you there is no explicit verses, as you said, regarding the Trinity, right? Okay, what about Jesus being God? Do you have any explicit verses that says Jesus is God? Uh, what I like to say to Muslims about Jesus saying he's God, hmm. he didn't come to be glorified. He came to die for sins. A lot of times he spoke in parables. So he was his his goal was his mission was to die for sins. That's why he didn't explicitly say I am God. So the answer is no. No, there he it comes out. It comes out at times when he's dealing with people, especially because he No no, but is there anything explicit? Not parables, not the way he's speaking to people, not all of what you said. Explicit. Is there anything explicit? Uh I this this verses that clearly say he's God, like John 1 1. He's the, the word is God. It doesn't say so, Jesus, it says the word. And you can understand the word in different ways. You would see Jesus himself describing the word of God speaking about the word of God in the same gospel of John. So when Jesus mentions the word of God, he is not talking about himself. He's talking about the literal speech of God. So this is not explicit. It's implicit. But you're saying the word of God this is implicit. You can understand it to be the speech of God. Like be and it is. In the beginning was the word. The word of be. The word of creation. And it is. It was. The creation was. The word was God because the creation. The word is the speech of God. Right? So you can look at it from that perspective, for example. But, but So it's not explicit. Anything which is implicit, it has more than one meaning. Right? Something which is explicit, for example, Jesus says he doesn't know the hour. That's explicit. This is uh, Mark 13, 30, 32. No one knows the day and the hour. Not the angels in heaven. Not the son. Only the father. This is an explicit verse because you cannot understand it other way. It means the son doesn't know. It means only the Father knows, right? You cannot get another understanding of the verse, right? It's one understanding. So that's an, that's an example of an explicit verse. So you do not have any explicit verse that says Jesus is God. Okay. Do you have any explicit verse that says that Jesus had two natures? This is um, on the Mount of tr Transfiguration. Uh, it sh it sh he showed his divine nature. No, no. Did he say, I have a divine and, 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 and human nature? He said, uh, there was verses where he said, Father, glorify me with the glory we had before the world was. Okay, so you're, you're, quoting John, you're quoting John chapter 17, verse 5. Why don't you start from the beginning then? What is the first verse? What does it say? Let me look. Okay, he looked up to heaven and then mm -hmm. he said, Father. Yes. And then he talked about the glory. Read, read. I want you to read. I'll show you now. This very, Trust me, this chapter is, is not supporting you. Trust me in any way. And and bringing that is 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 but, but let me ask you just one thing before before you get there right he said father glorify me right my question is if you're God don't you already have glory no one glorifies God because God is already glorious so him saying God glorify me by definition shows that he's not God it shows the opposite of what you're trying to say because he's really? asking for something and you cannot ask for something that you, you that you have okay if I give you my book you cannot say give me my book right I already give it to you so if he's saying father glorify me give me he's asking for glory that means he doesn't have glory how can you be god when you don't have glory but let's read the text let's read the text let's read because it's an interesting text let's read it starting from verse one please when jesus had spoken these words he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said father the hour has come glorify mm -hmm. your son that mm -hmm. the son may glorify you yes continue since you have given authority over all flesh to give mm -hmm. eternal life to all whom you have given him okay so 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 He's talking to who? To the Father. Okay. And the Father is not the Son or the Holy Spirit. No. Right? Okay. Yes. Continue. Now, what does he say to the Father now? And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. So he said the Father is the only true God. Yes. The Father. Not the God. No. Uh, only the Father. He says the Father is the only true God. And then he says Jesus is sent by the only true God. So yes. that, that verse that you quoted is evidence against you. It is clear cut verse that shows that Jesus is not God. And the, even the Holy Spirit is not God because he said the only true God is the Father. They may know you, the only true God, right? So when okay. you are the only true God, then there is no other gods, is it? I see this um, as... And I want to say, look, I want to say, what, how do you say your name? Hamilton. Hamilton. Look, Hamilton, I can see sincerity from you. Yeah. You're not, I don't, can, I don't see, I'll tell you this is honesty, right? Because I've been talking to many people. I don't see arrogance from you. 
I see that you're accepting things when they are, when they make sense. You don't argue for the sake of arguing. When, t- when something is clear like this, you agree that something is clear, right? Mm-hmm. Which is a sign of sincerity, which is a good thing because that's why I ask Allah to guide you. Because if you are sincere, then you can find guidance eventually, inshallah, right? But if you just try to ignore the the, the clear verses, then you'll always be misguided. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Allah says in the Quran something beautiful in chapter 3 of the Quran, verse 7. He's the one who sent down upon you the book. In the, in the book, which is the Quran, are clear verses. Okay? Then Allah says, and other verses that have more than one meaning. Okay? Now listen to this because it's very important now. It deals with the Christians, right? Then Allah says, Those who have a disease in their heart. Okay? They follow the ambiguous verses that have more than one meaning. And they ignore the clear verses. Seeking to cause corruption. You understand? Yes. So Allah is saying this is a principle here. It's a principle of people of deviation, the people of falsehood. What they do is they ignore the, the clear verses and they go to the implicit verses and they build their belief in the implicit verses. And another principle of the people of, of, of deviation is that they believe something, then they look in the text what so supports their belief. You don't look at the text and derive the belief from the text. They believe first and then they look in the text to justify what they believe. And we've got deviant groups in the Islamic community that do the same. I'm not even saying just the Christians do that because this verse here is in the Quran. It's addressing the Muslims as well as teaching them, right? So this is a principle of the people of deviation. They all do this. They ignore the explicit verses and they focus on the implicit verses. Now, you, uh, so far, what we found is that there's not a single verse that is explicit that supports your creed, your beliefs. There's only explicit verses that destroys your belief. Like Jesus saying he doesn't know. And God's all-knowing. You cannot be God and you don't know. Finding a verse that says the Father is the only true God who completely destroys the concept of the Trinity. These are the explicit verses. So the explicit verses, they actually go against your faith rather than supporting you. Okay? So what you should be there is you should be sincere. And you should then accept that, okay, you know what? He, what he's saying actually makes sense here. I need to look into this because there is nothing in my scripture that actually supports what I believe. So why do I actually believe what I believe when the scripture does not support? Okay? That's what a sincere person would do. Also, I would ask you, and thank you for listening patiently, by the way. I really appreciate that. It's, it's very good. Now, also, I want to say, why do you believe the Bible is the word of God? Because that's the last thing that you, you, you that I asked you about that you said you believed, right? Why do you believe the Bible is the word of God? Go ahead, tell me. Um, because we believe that uh, the, the Holy Spirit will wit- give you bear witness to the truth. Mm-hmm. So that's the purpose of him coming down after Christ, for him to... No, but the only, sorry, sorry, that's called circular, sorry to interrupt you, that's called circular reasoning. You're saying I believe in the Bible because of the Holy Spirit that the Bible told me about. I believe in the Bible because of the Holy Spirit. Why do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Because of the Bible. That's circular reasoning. You you cannot do this. I'm saying, why do you believe in the Bible? Now, without anything in the Bible, you should have just rational justification. Why do you believe in the Bible that is not from within the Bible itself? So what I mean by that, you cannot say the Bible says this, that's why I believe it. So the Bible says that, uh, that it's true. That's why I believe it's true. That doesn't make any. Anyone can say that for any scripture, isn't it? A Hindu can come say to you, I believe in the Bhagavad Gita and the Vedas because the Vedas said believe in it. The Muslim will do the same. The Jew will do the same. No, I'm asking what is the rational justifications that you can present to say, okay, look, here is the reasons why I believe that the the uh, Bible is the word of God, which a Muslim can do. A Muslim can can look, say, one, two, three, four, five. These are the reasons why I believe the Quran is the word of God. Or I believe Prophet Muhammad is a messenger. They will easily be able to do this. The, our issue with the Christians, they always have subjective experiences. They say, oh, I've seen Jesus in my dream or something. That's not evidence that, that you are the, your religion is the truth. Because everyone has subjective experiences. So my question is, what do you have that, that you can demonstrate that the Bible is the word of God? Oh, go ahead. Tell me. What, what Other than the Holy Spirit, what do you have to demonstrate that the Bible is the word of God? Um, just the, the way the Old Testament and the New Testament matches together. Uh, the the fact that the prophecies about Jesus and in him fulfilling those prophecies. Can you give an example? Um, being born in Bethlehem. Uh, okay, where is the, that in the Old Testament? Micah. Where? Where? Which verse? Uh, I, I'm not hundred percent sure where. Okay. I don't have the. the what verse. does the verse say? Someone would be born in Jerusalem. How many people was born were born in Jerusalem and in, in Bethlehem? So many people, right? So why is specific about that prophecy? What, well, what other prophecies that you have that are specific? Tell me. It's all of them put together. Um, be, him being the seed of David. No, no, but but the verse that about Bethlehem does not say his name is, is Jesus and this and that he's be born from Mary and he's going to be a miraculous. It doesn't say it doesn't give all of this description, right? It just says someone is born in in, in Bethlehem, right? Okay. 
What other verses you do you have? Um, him being born of a virgin. Okay, where is that in the Old Testament? Isaiah. Where? I don't Isaiah know. Isaiah exactly. 9 6? Isaiah 9 6. Uh, I don't think so. To, us, think to us, a child is born. Is that what you're referring to? No. Uh, okay. Him. A child with, uh, being born of a virgin. Well, go ahead. Where? Where? In Isaiah. It's in Isaiah. I don't know exactly where. I don't Can you search it up? What can is I it? Search it up? Can you search it up? If you want, you can search it up. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Help us to see what you believe in. Where are all of these verses that justifies the Christian belief? And honestly, I'm saying to, to you this with all like like respect. If I was in your position, I thought I wouldn't know how to have faith to even come to evangelize to people when even my own religion I cannot justify. You know. Well, um... you can find the verse if you want. Where is the verse? Because you you're bringing me new verses now, right? So let's let's listen to it. <laughs> I have to look these up. Um... Also, Isaiah 9, uh, 9 6. I already told you about it, isn't it? Uh, two seconds ago. Okay, let's read Isaiah 9 6. No problem. That's why when you said Isaiah, this is what Christians use, not what you use, because what you use, I don't think is there. Okay, let's read Isaiah 9 6 to see that Isaiah 9 6 has nothing to do with your belief. Let's read it. Okay. To us, a child is, is born. You, you don't have the verse in front of you? I have get, my get, Bible. Get, get, get it in your Bible. I want you to read it in your Bible because you, you don't think that I'm maybe making up the verses. You know, I know what it says, but I'll let you read it in your in your Bible. Which version is that? Uh, ESV. Okay. Okay, Isaiah 9, 6. Okay, to us a child is given, a son is born, right? He will be called Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Right? Read, read, read it, read it. For, for to us a child is born, to us a uh -huh. son is given. Uh -huh. and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name oh, wait. shall be... Wait, do you know the government of who there? David. When it says the government will be upon his shoulder, it means he will sit on the throne of David. In the other versions, it will say he'll sit on the throne of David. Yeah? Okay, so government will be upon his shoulder. What else? And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty his God. Name, his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace. Father. And Prince of Peace. And Prince of Peace, yes. Okay, so we have four titles there. Can you show me anywhere in the New Testament where Jesus' mother called him this or anyone called him any of these names was jesus called the father um uh, that means he's the, the father he's the father of eternity no no but you guys say he's the son yes um but he gives eternal life so isn't the father the father of eternity no but jesus says the father gives eternal life he says that he gives the, uh, the eternal life to whom he wishes that's what jesus would say jesus says the father is the one who gives eternal life not the son Right. Okay. My my question is though, I'm asking you, even if there is a verse that says he gives eternal life, that's not what we're asking for. We're saying where was he called everlasting father? Um or prince of peace or 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 uh, mighty counselor or whatever all of these four titles that you have. You where see? are they? Yes. And by the way, I want to say something to you. You understand English, right? Yes. Very well. Maybe more than me. I think you understand it more than me. So when we say to us a son is given, is that in the past or the future tense? To us, the son is given. Yeah. Um. I, I I heard this argument before about this not being written. I'm not making an argument. I'm asking: Is it in the past or the future? It's in a. It's in a. Um. I mean, it refers to the future as far as far as Jesus goes. So when we say to us, a son will be given. That's the past. That's the future. Okay. So to us, a son is given. Is what? It's the past. Okay, thank you. But I'm I'm not, I'm just giving another remark there that shows how you introduce your belief, even though the text does not support it. But the point is, look, where is he ever called one of these four things? And and another question is, it says he will sit on the throne of David. Did did Jesus sit on the throne of David ever? Well, in his second coming, he will. Uh, but we can say that about anyone. I can say you're the Messiah, but you say to me that he was not called this or this or that, and he didn't sit on the throne of David. I'll say to you, Hamilton, when he comes in his second coming, he will do all of that. You can say that about anyone. That's why the Jews, they use these, the same verses that you're using to reject that Jesus was the Messiah. And they said he doesn't fit our criteria. The Messiah in our, in our book is going to bring peace. He did not bring peace. A Messiah in our book is going to sit on the throne of David. He didn't sit on the throne of David. A Messiah in our book is going to do all of these things that Jesus did not do. So how would you respond to them? That's, that's going to be in a second coming. He came to uh, as I said to you, but they will say back to you that can be applied to every, to anyone. Don't you agree? That's rational. I can say anyone is the Messiah, and then I, when you say he didn't fit the criteria, I'll say he'll do it in the second coming. So anyone can be the Messiah there, based on that definition. Um, he can't. We believe he came to die. That's why he 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 was humble, and he didn't he didn't so want. How, okay, so wh where does it say in the prophecies of the Old Testament that he's going to come to die? 
Isaiah 53. Let's go to Isaiah 53. I'll go to verse... I have this memorized. I'll go to verse 9. Okay, you have it memorized? What does verse 9 say? 9 and 10. Hold on, let me, let me double check. Go ahead. 53, 9 and 10. And they made his grave with the wicked and with a rich nine? man in his death. Which verse is that? Uh, Isaiah 53, 9. Yeah, can you read 10? And yeah, it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He okay. has put him to grief okay. when his soul makes an offering for guilt. You okay. will see his offspring. He shall prolong uh, his days. Okay. Of, Did Jesus... Oh, let's stop there. Right, right. Let's stop there. Did Jesus see his offspring? No. Did he prolong his days? You know, prolong means you live a long life, right? So when I say someone died in his 30s, that someone is dying in a very young age. He's dying in his prime, literally. Right? He didn't even reach his prime from an Islamic perspective. That's his prime for us is 40. So he didn't even reach his prime. That could speak of his resurrection. No, no, no. But it's not about what can speak. You're using that verse as a, as a justification. This is a prophecy. Where are the children that, Je as I said to you, you can make that claim about everyone. Oh, he didn't fit that part about the, he's going to fulfill it later on. No. My question is, where did Jesus have children or pro prolong his days? Where? He didn't. Okay. So then, so far, all the, the prophecies that you brought are clearly not about Jesus. Because we see that they do not fit Jesus' life. But you claim it will happen in the second coming. So which which verse that can you bring that actually happened that we can see this is this is proving it? And the whole the whole prophecy, don't take a part of it. Like you were trying to take a part of Isaiah 53. You have to take the whole thing. So which prophecy that you have that fits Jesus' life? That because of it you believe? I mean, these are the ones I know um, in the Old Testament. Uh, scholar says, I mean, people say that there's more like, um, but these are the ones I have memorized. The, the ones that are more that are worse. <laughs> this is the best you got. I'm telling you this after engaging with, after looking at even what the scholars say, right? I'm answering you because I already know what you, you're coming with. Point is, these things that you, this is the best you got. And none of it supports your belief, okay? Now, so basically, there's no justification to believe the Bible is the word of God. Even the Bible has contradictions. I mean, I know if this. If it has contradictions, you want me to bring you examples or you already know? I know though. I know the scribal okay. errors when they copy. Uh, no, no, I not feel like okay. The okay, messages, good. the message, the message of Jesus Christ and Him dying for us. That's the same throughout the Bible, and it's always no problem. Been the same. So you agree the Bible is corrupt, but there are the the main message. The main message is there. That's what you say. I mean, scribes made errors when copying stuff like numbers. No, 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 no. There are people who inserted intentionally. There's a difference between an error and something done intentionally. Like, for example, 1 John 5, 7. Someone in intentionally introducing the Trinity in the, th the text because it's not there. So why so, didn't so they fix additions, it? So these additions, sorry? So why didn't they, they didn't fix it throughout all this time? They left it alone. They did. No, they did remove it after the King James. It's only in the King James Version. If you open any version, if you open the King James, if you open 1 John 5, 7, do it right now. Open the ASV that you have. The one that you have. Open First Epistle of John chapter 5, verse 7. Oh, about the 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 the, the Trinity. Yeah, it's not in the SV. It's not in the SV. It's only okay, in the but it's exactly. So my point is, these are intentional additions. The story well, of the adulterous women. Let the first person who doesn't commit the sin. Yeah. All of these are all their creedal beliefs. They're well, not just any additions. They are things that supports your creed, which shows that there are additions that that corrupts the creed. But they, we know that some manuscripts that we we discovered manuscripts after the King James. That go you back know the oldest further. manuscript you have? Um, I don't know exactly. Yeah, so the oldest thing you have is nearly 400 years, the Codex Sinaiticus. So if the that's oldest the thing you have... That's the complete yeah, New Testament. Of, okay, that's the point. From the first century, you got nothing. From the second century, you got nothing. Some people yeah. say from the second century, late second century, or they say you have the P52, which is as big as a card, like literally, right? Mm -hmm. So it's nothing. It has no creed, no belief, this and that. So if you actually look, most of the manuscripts you got, by the way, is a thousand years later. Most of the things that you have, if you ignore the Codex Sinaiticus, right? So the Codex Sinaiticus is the main thing that has your creeds and your beliefs. There is not a single church father in the first 300 years before the councils that said the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are co-equal, co-eternal, under one. You're not going to find... They mentioned the father. Holy Spirit. They mentioned... No, they no, don't... they mentioned... Separate entities. They mention them as separate entities. Yes. They don't mention that. Yeah, but that doesn't prove your belief. I'm saying they, they didn't mention the Trinity, right? So my point is this. 
you've got look a bible that you agree that there are additions and alterations to there are contradictions as well which i can demonstrate if you want to see and that scripture has you have no justification that can stand on its legs that shows that this scripture is from god there is no explicit verses that shows jesus is, is god there's no explicit verses that shows the trinity there's no explicit verses that shows the two natures of jesus this is the whole creed of christianity what else can i do right so what we are inviting you to Hamilton is to believe in one creator, to believe in the creator that created the heavens and the earth, the one, the only, the unique, the supreme, the one that's, that does not have partners, the one that does not have children, the one that does not have parents, the one that does not have a family. He is the one who created us through his creation and he's the creator. He's one, uniquely one, absolute, eternal, self-sufficient, does not beget, nor he's born, and there is nothing like unto him. He created the heavens and the earth. Nothing happens in the, hev in the heavens and the earth without his permission. This is the creator we're, we're calling you to worship. The same creator that Abraham worshipped, that Moses worshipped, that David worshipped, that Solomon worshipped, that all the, the people of God worshipped. Allah commands us in the Quran in chapter 3, verse 63 onwards. He commands us to say to you Christians, say, O people of the book, O Christians, and O Jews, right? Come to a just word that we only worship the creator and no one else, not the son, not the father, not the Holy Spirit, the creator, the one who created everything. The creator, the one true creator, the one that Adam worshipped. When Jesus, sorry, when Moses was seeking help, who was he seeking help from? Which God? Uh, Yahweh. Okay. When Abraham was worshipping, which God he was worshipping? One or three in one? God. Abraham, he... when he was alive, if you were Abraham, what was in your mind? There is one God or there's three in one? Well, um, Jesus said in, when Abraham saw, he saw his days and he was glad. Uh, so in... I know you quote in John chapter five verse eighty five, right? I'm not, I'm not uh, sorry, fifty eight, right? I'm not, I'm not referring to that, right? I'm not, I'm not referring to that at all. That's a different story that I, will, I don't want to go into right now. I'm talking about Abraham, not what Jesus said, or what, what Jesus saw. I'm saying that Jesus is uh, Abraham's days on this life when he was walking around. Did he worship one God or three in one? Well, as far as you know, it was one God, but we know that that same God is a triune God because. The further revelation. No, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. Look, Hamilton, now you're introducing what you believe. I'm not saying what you believed. I'm saying what Abraham believed. Don't you agree that Abraham is better than me and you? Yes. Uh, uh, he he, you're not sure? You're not sure that Abraham is better than me and you? What's no, going on? I want to say, I want to say that. Abraham is called the friend of God in the Bible. Are you the friend of God? I'm, I don't I'm not denying that at that. all. I'm not denying okay. that at all. I, I just want to okay, say so that. Okay, so Abraham, wait, wait, wait. So Abraham was closer to God than me and you. Be honest, yeah. Hamilton. Okay, so someone who is the friend of God, imagine me being your friend, and I don't even know you're three in one. Um, but there's a verse that Mo that God said to Moses about revealing his name. He 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 told them that Abraham didn't even know that about himself. Yeah, so, so imagine me. I'm I'm your friend. I don't know your name. I don't know your name, and I don't well, know your definition. That's what the Bible says to Moses. Um, that's so, a contradiction. Uh, it's not because God progressively revealed Himself. Okay, so, you, so even if you talk about progressive revelation, that's not the story. My point is this. The God that every messenger worshipped, even Jesus. Jesus did not worship the Trinity. He worshipped two. He worshipped the Father. Every messenger and prophet, everyone who was sent, including Jesus, worshipped one God. None of them worshipped the Trinity. You will only introduce to worship in a Trinity when the church introduced the Trinity belief into to Christianity. The we are we are calling you we are calling you to worship one creator alone like if you ask a muslim why do you believe the quran is from god why do you believe prophet muhammad is a prophet they will give you reasons one by one so we will we'll start mentioning the, the predictions of the future or the prophet muhammad or sorry the prophecies of the future that prophet muhammad made which are tense clear explicit they actually happen the way they, they've been said we will talk about the quran talking about uh, biological life and things that we're learning about today like the expansion of the universe embryology and how the baby is developing in the mother's womb right we'll talk about history and how the quran talks about things in history that even corrects the bible that has been changed for example the story of joseph and how the person that at the time of joseph was not pharaoh was king while the bible calls him pharaoh it was not that the title was not given to the king at that time anyways it was the period of the hexus so it's historically inaccurate or the quran corrects it and the quran talks about certain uh, historical beliefs that no one knew it shows that this is a scripture from god we'll talk about the quran how it cannot be imitated how no one can bring a scripture like it how can no one can imitate it and bring anything like it how it's free from contradictions how it's free from errors how it's a miracle and, and it's been memorized we'll talk about the life of the prophet muhammad and i can go on and on and on right and all of these are clear-cut justifications to make me 100% sure 
positive. This is the word of God. But why you're coming with Hamilton is just, I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, it's ambiguous. I don't have anything clear. How do you then expect to go out and evangelize to anyone? I really, uh, I'm saying this with all like, like, like respect and love and everything. Look, I'm saying, I don't understand how some Christians come and they want to preach Christianity when they cannot even justify it themselves, to themselves. It's, um, it's baffling to me. We, we, you don't need to have everything in front of you to believe something. You know, but what do you know, have? I was asking for what do you have? I, we have the Bible. We have the witness of the Holy Spirit. We have church fathers. We have people that came before us that test that testified to the truth. Even yeah, though, but uh, they didn't testify to what you believe in. As I said to you, the church fathers that came before the councils, none of them testifies to what you believe. You said well, the Trinity. Yeah. You said the Bible. I said to you already the problems of the Bible being changed. You said the Holy Spirit. I said to you that's subjective. So what do you have then? Well, I, it's, it's my faith, you know. I, I It's a blind faith. It's not a blind faith. Um, like, you know. You know what heart, blind faith is? Yeah, just believe in something that you don't. There's not much. You cannot rationally justify. That's that's what, what it is. I don't think that's Christianity at all. Uh, I, I believe this. This God gave us plenty in the Bible. He gave us a lot of a lot everything that we need to know. And I believe all, all the all the that the Bible says. So it, it's a. But why is it justification for your belief? I know you believe it, but that's what we're saying. You believe it. That's the blind faith because you don't have the justification to believe it. Well, I have. To, I do believe there's justification for it. It's just. If you if you have a different belief, it'll be it'll seem impossible for you. But if you if you believe it, if you study okay, it, have you have you read the Quran? Have you read the Quran? As sections, sections of the Quran. Okay. Do you have any questions for you? Because look, I think I delivered the message for you. You know, okay, okay. and I think guidance is from Allah. Guidance is from God alone. I believe Prophet Muhammad is a messenger of God. Jesus, Moses, Noah, Abraham, all of them are prophets and messengers of God. We don't worship them. We don't seek their help. And and after their death, we only seek help from the Creator alone. Supreme creator that created everything. That's that's our belief as Muslims. Quran is perfect. It has all of the evidences that proves this from God. The one I mentioned to you. That's the message of Islam. right? We call you to that. And we hope that one day Allah guides you. And ask Allah to guide you to the truth. Because you are a sincere person. A respectful person. And I appreciate that. You know. So do you have any questions about Islam? Because I did ask you about Christianity. It's only fair if you got any questions for me. I don't mind to answer you. Go ahead. If Whoa. you don't, it's okay as well. You don't have to. There's no pressure. And if there is any other Christians who are, who want, who are watching, who think that they can justify and explain the things that he couldn't explain, I'm happy for you to come on and, and, and show us. And if you're an atheist as well, you want to come on, you want to talk about Islam or challenge what we believe in, you're ha we're happy for you to come on as well. Okay, go ahead. Sorry, Amut. Go ahead. No, I don't have any questions. Uh, okay. Thank so you. my advice is you have a, Qur a Quran with you already, you said, yeah? I have it online. You have it online. Okay. Uh, you are in the US? Yes. You know my email or no? No. Uh, let me just type it down for you. One of the mods will be quicker than me to type it down. Let's see. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm quicker than the mods. What's going on, mods? Why are you not doing your work? Okay. Okay. So this is my email. Yeah. Okay. You see it? Yeah, I see it. Uh, basically, if you send me, if you like, you send me your address, I'll, I'll give you, I'll send you a Quran. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. I'll send you one. Read it. If you've got questions after reading it, I'm happy to answer you. If you've got any questions about Islam, my email is there. I'm happy to answer you. We've got no problems, alhamdulillah. We are يعني, sure about our faith, alhamdulillah. There's, there's no issues for us. Okay? okay. I'll let yes. you go, Hamilton. It was, it was right, nice man. talking to you. You're always welcome, by the way. Anyone who's respectful, who's listening, and you're always welcome on my channel, you know, anytime, you know? Okay, Hamilton, I'll let you go now. Okay? All Bye. Right.